Let's talk about more of the Sharpen filters in Photoshop. There are quite a few of them available to use for the various reasons, and they'll all be applied in the same general way. You would select a layer and navigate to the filter menu, select Sharpen, and then choose one of the following options. Shake Reduction, Sharpen, Sharpen Edges, Sharpen More, Smart Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. As with the blur filters, the great tip is to convert a layer to a smart object before applying a Sharpen filter and it'll become a fully editable smart filter. We will begin by talking about shake reduction. An example of when to use shake reduction is if your hand is unsteady when capturing an image. This is what they call camera shake and the effect is a slight blur caused by the movement of the camera. This filter uses smart technology to attempt to remove the unwanted camera motion from the image. Let's take a look he here at the examples and go through the steps needed to correct a shake reduction error in your camera. And so I have two examples here. This first example is straight from your textbook, so you can find this image in the supply files. And you can see on the left-hand side that the original image is slightly blurry because someone moved their hand when they were capturing an image. And so on the right-hand side, by applying a default shake reduction filter, um, we have been able to make it a little bit more crisp and clean. I have a second example here um, to show you the steps necessary to complete this task. And so I have an image, it's an image of a lady in a restaurant and there's an avian bottle sitting on the table. And the avian bottle is slightly out of focus that the camera moved or something like that to cause the slight blurriness. With the image open in Photoshop, I chose filter, sharpen, and then shake reduction. A dialog box appears and allows you to make adjustments about the, the image. And I, um, I didn't do much to the image, all I did um, was allow the, the shake reduction to do its default settings and I moved the bounding box that you're seeing here at the pins closer to the avian bottle. If we jump over to Photoshop I'll show you how to oh before I jump back I think there's one more slide I want to show you and so you can see by um, using the default settings and maybe moving the sliders back and forth a little bit for the the blurring and the smoothing of the image I was able to take the blurry avian bottle that's out of focus and bring it a little bit more in focus. You don't want to use the shake reduction to take something that is incredibly out of focus and make it back in focus. It's only for things that are slightly out of focus. If we jump over to Photoshop, I have that image from your textbook open and we can apply the same effect that you learned about in your reading. If we go to the filter menu and choose sharpen and then shake reduction, um, basically, the default settings are going to, um, in this particular example, are going to make the image look more crisp and more clean. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see the original over here on the left-hand side in the middle of the screen and slightly blurry. And on the right-hand side is the effect that you're going to get just by the default settings. If I select preview, you can see the preview in real time and you can see that it's not going to do the best job of making it perfectly crisp and clear, but when we look at it in um, relationship to the size that it would be displayed as a project, um, it looks much more crisp and much more clear um, with those settings. If we zoom in over here on the right hand side, you can see the settings that are being used by default to uh, smooth or to reduce the, the shake of the image. And so the blur trace bounds are set to 10, the smoothing is set to 30% and the artifact suppression is set to 30% as well. If you increase or decrease these settings, you can have more or less um, shake reduction um, removed from the image. If you go too much, what's going to happen is it's going to bounce beyond being back in focus and it's going to push it more out of focus when it's trying to fix the shake of the image. You can kind of see that happening in the image. You can see kind of ripples coming off of the image because it's attempting to put the image back into the place where it should be if you had captured it right to begin with. When we select OK, we can zoom out here. And you can see that when we look at the image in its actual size, it looks much more crisp and clear than it did to begin with. 